On now with 11B, Commission General Regulation Number 393, Black Bear Hunt, Temporary, T-004-10, Program Officer 3, Marine Hollinger. Item reads, this, the Commission may adopt a temporary regulation relating to revising provisions governing the establishment of a black bear hunt, eligibility waiting period requirements, bonus point program, weapons restrictions, tag fees, and other matters related thereto. All right, Maureen, what do we have here? Uh, thank you, Chairman and Commission. Maureen Hollinger, for the record, Nevada Department of Wildlife License Office. I oversee the application hunt program for the department. Um, to, I'm here today to present the CGR uh, regulation language to uh, allow for the authority of a hunt to be established for black bear. Um, in your packet, there was the language that was <coughs> developed as part of the Commission General Regulation 393 and then a support <coughs> material paper that I will go through like I did on the guided hunt. Um, for the background, in June of 2010, Game Division provided an informational report on black bear management. At the August 2010 Commission meeting, Carl Lackey, the Department of Wildlife Biologist, provided a presentation on black bears. The Commission at that time directed the Department to draft regulatory and season language for the potential of a bear hunt. At the S September uh, 2010 Commission meeting, Carl Lackey, Department of Wildlife Biologist, and Larry Gilbertson, Chief of Game Division, presented a report on a recommendations on bear season structure. And at that time, the Department was directed to go forward with regulatory changes, in other words, develop language for that potential, which is what I'm here to present today. Um, the statutory and regulatory authority for a black bear hunt, NRS 502-250, provides the authority for other big game tags other than deer and antelope and elk. And that same statute provides for the fee structure on the not to exceed amounts. Um, NAC 503-020 and identifies black bear as a game mammal, so it will qualify for t game tags. No change was necessary in NAC 502-405 regarding tag questionnaires. If we develop a season in a hunt because it is a tag, black bear being a game mammal does fall under that regulation already. So I didn't have to amend any language in that NAC. The next section in the support material is just explanations of the language in the CGR. In section two, this section provides new language in Chapter 502 regarding fees for a black bear tag. That's the five, NAC 502. Chapter 502 is where we have all our um, big game application uh, regulations. It also provides for the period of eligibility and presentation of the skull and hide to the department if a bear is harvested. In subsection one, that's the subsection that provides language that residents and non-residents have to be eligible to apply for a black bear tag. With the language written in this fashion, it provides the public and the commission the ability to provide the option of a resident or a non-resident hunt when it's establishing the hunt in the seasons and bags structure. In subsection two, it, that's the language regarding the fees for black bear tags. As stated before, NRS provided, provides guidance. We can establish the fees in NAC. Um, which is in this CGR and uh, at the direction of the Commission in September um, I was directed to provide language for $100 for a resident big game tag and $200 for the non-resident big game tag. Section 3 is also new language. This section provides for waiting periods should someone draw a tag and harvest or not, or not draw a tag. Subsection 1 is the language presenting the waiting period if a black bear is not harvested, the hunter would be eligible to apply again in the following year. In subsection two, it's the language regarding a waiting period if a black bear is harvested, the person would have to wait five years before they would be eligible to apply again. Section four, also new language to chapter 502. Subsection one is the language for the time frames to report the harvest and to present the harvest harvested black bear to the department for inspection. The inspection will allow the department to obtain the variety of biological measurements from the animal 
for the department's ongoing black bear management. Subsection 2 establishes language regarding killing a female accompanied by a cub in the definition of a cub. In Section 5, this is also new language. It's the section that provides the commission the authority to establish the quota, the seasons, the management units or unit groups, and stipulations on season, season closure should a season be established. It establishes a toll-free telephone number for the public to call to keep the public informed on whether the season is open or closed, similar to our current mountain lion hunt. It also establishes the other methods of notification of hunters once the season is closed. In Section 6, that's also new language. It, it's a section on baiting and provides the definition of baiting. <coughs> Section 8, now in Section 7, which I didn't list in the support, it just ha it directs us toward <coughs> Chapter 503 where new language would have to occur. Uh, section 8 is new. Um, I just went over the baiting. Section 9 is um, housekeeping on established uh, regulations that are already in uh, Nevada Administrative Code. Uh, nine deals with uh, including black bear in the list of species that restricts a person to obtaining only one tag unless otherwise specified by the commission and then establishes language uh, it covers the bonus point in the application fee for black bear where there was no changes there since it was already established section 10 was also a housekeeping correction for established language the section amends the established language in subsection 1b to include black bear as one of the species for which an unsuccessful applicant be awarded a bonus point in the bonus point program through the draw process. Section 11 is housekeeping on established language. It amends language regarding the bonus point program species categories to include black bear as one of the species categories. Section 12 is housekeeping. It amends language regarding the use of dogs to include black bear. <coughs> Section 13 is also housekeeping. It amends established language regarding the sale of bear gallbladders. The language lists um, two gallbladders in possession. This is to take into account that there could be a hunter that has a tag in Cal black bear tag in California and could possibly have a tag in Nevada also. And then in <coughs> section 14, the language change takes place in the first paragraph and amends the established language to include black bear in the species listed. And that's the, the huge NAC on all your unit boundaries. Um, it's just adding the, the species at the very first section of it. There's no changes to any unit boundaries. And then programming, um, the current application hunt program is table driven if, if established without any differences in how other hunts are, are operated. It's table driven. We should be able to establish it within the current rules without any programming changes. Um, next. I'd like to address um, the <coughs> County Advisory Board recommendations that I received uh, through the, from the Executive Secretary when they came out <coughs> uh, for, uh, in regards to any recommended language changes. Carson, uh, Clark County, Douglas County, Eureka County, Humboldt County, Lincoln County, and Washoe County all supported the language um, with the exception of Washoe with one amendment to the language they would like to see the non-resident tag fee at $300. Um, they had some other suggestions on language they wanted to see in section 4 language on edible portions. Edible portions is established uh, in NRS and NAC so language isn't necessary here. Um, and then they'd also like to see a management fee for black bear. Um, that would have to be established at the legislative level since it would be a new fee. So um, there would be no added recommendations for language in those topics because it's either addressed elsewhere or would need to go to the legislature. So um, I did not receive any documentation as to any of the advisory boards <coughs> being opposed to the language as presented. 
I turn it back to the commission for any questions on the language for this workshop. Okay. Um, go, uh, questions. I had a question. <laughs> uh, one of the county boards uh, <clears throat> changed the fees, right? They, Washoe County, like I just stated, it, uh, recommended an amendment to the non-resident tag fee to three hundred dollars. That was the only. But the resident also was a hundred and a quarter. Somebody. Uh, one I didn't of the see county one boards uh, recommend a hundred quarter, a hundred and a half for the residents. I did not see that in the recommendations I received this week. I just saw the one for the three hundred from Washington okay. County. So. Go ahead. <clears throat> but statutorily, what you've said here is that the fee shall not exceed one hundred and twenty for statutorily for resident and twelve hundred dollars for. Uh, <clears throat> For non resident, is that correct? Correct. Thank you. You know, like I stated earlier, <coughs> I was requested to bring back the resident fee at $100. So that's. All right. You know, we can discuss all of that and later on in this item, but if there's any specific questions, questions for Marine or. Go ahead, Tom. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This may be for Chief Bonamici, but maybe Maureen has the answer. In Section 6, um, is that a new requirement or does that exist uh, now <clears throat> uh, having to report uh, trapping or killing uh, within 48 hours accidental I mean, accidental would that include like being hit by a car or if you hit it with a car or <clears throat> I would probably need to defer that to Rob. It, it does say accidentally trapped or killed, but as to the reference to killed, the method of that, I wouldn't know. The, in, the intent here is accidentally trapped or killed uh, in the event you're hunting and there's an issue with bullet goes through, you know, this is so unlikely, goes through one bear and hits another, you know, bear aren't. Oh. With regards to the accidental, it's intended for hunting related situations. Okay. Uh, but also, we would like, um, and our biologists could speak better to it, but they track the number of bears that are hit by vehicles, uh, any accidental mortalities of any sort, uh, because they're keeping close tabs on our bear population. So the way this is written, it would require any accidental. You hit it with the car, you have to report it. Thank you. Very good. And uh, we've had presentations in the past on the biology of this situation. I don't know if you guys have any questions on that. Um, do we want to move on to public comment on the issue? Do you have any questions for staff on that? or? I have one Pearl, question for Mr. Lackey. He just said we'd like to see if the staff had anything to add to what uh, has already been presented on the biology. Um, see the guys in charge back there in the corner? <laughs> I, I'd like to ask Carl one question. Uh, we had a question for uh, Mr. Lackey. Yes. <clears throat> Please, sir. <clears throat> for the record, Carl Lackey, Nevada Department of Wildlife. How, how many bears are hit on the highway annually, roughly, in your estimate that you know? It, it varies year to year. Um, we track all anthropogenic causes of mortalities on bears, and it, we're averaging about 23 a year for all causes right now. Uh, this year we had, we've had six hit by cars so far. And if you have a bear that's a nuisance bear, three strikes, and he's put down? For the most part, it depends on on the every situation, but for the most part, yes. And how many of those are annually harvested? Again, that varies considerably from year to year. This year, we had to put down 20. 20. Yep. So you, for the record, could say there's approximately in normal years is 50 a normal amount for a year. No, average is 23 a year. Oh, for both causes. Excuse me. For all anthropogenic causes. Okay. You know, for example, this year we had a couple hit by trains. We had an individual shoot one, a couple taken by wildlife services, things like that. The guy that they, that shot one a couple days ago that was in his 
uh, restaurant. No, okay. that was California. That was in California. California. Okay. But it would be in the same general area. Yes. Thank you. All right, Mr. Lent and Mr. Bell. I had a question uh, on your bear deterrent policy. When you you try to when you let them go, uh, you use uh, a shotgun and and the noise of a of a weapon going off, and that's is that effective against uh, deterring a bear? It can be. We've used you're referring to aversive conditioning. Right. We've been using aversive conditioning and on-site releases for the most part since 1997. We actually did research on that, which is available on the website. Uh, it can be effective. It depends on the situation, the age of the bear, and the level of habituation that the bear has already had. And it also depends largely on cooperation of the people. And California has adopted your that policy, I think, is to get bears afraid of gunshots. Yes, California started using a ver version conditioning probably about two years ago, I want to say, maybe three years ago. <coughs> Thank you. Um, we had Mr. Kevin, Mr. McBeth. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Carl, we had a pretty extensive presentation at our Fallon meeting, but um, just for the benefit of the folks here today, could you just kind of go over the uh, population dynamics of, of the, the population we're talking about, the California, Nevada population, and the um, <clears throat> composition, sex ratios, that sort of thing, just to give us a, give the, kind of get everybody on the same page here. Sure. Um, we started collecting data on Nevada bears back in 1997. To date, we have handled, I think it's about 480 bears, uh, a little over 800 different times. So it's an immense amount of data on these bears. We've developed different population estimates over the years, published population estimates. The last one was in 2002. That estimate was based on about two and a half years worth of data. The current population estimate that we derived through a, a modeled population estimate work, working with UNR has not been published yet, obviously. but uh, that is that is on data comprising of about 12 years worth of data. Um, our population is male biased by about two to one. Current population estimate is two to 300, and that is kind of restricted to the area that we sampled. Um, it's a conservative estimate, as I as I stated to you guys earlier, for a number of different reasons. One, the heterogeneity and the capture probabilities, meaning. Not every bear had the same chance of being captured. We were targeting a lot of urban areas. Uh, number two, we did not simply did not sample a lot of the areas in Nevada where we know we have bears. We have uh, recruitment rates, survival rates on our bears uh, for males and females. Recruitment rates include juvenile recruitment and immigration. We are not able to separate that out. Um, couple points I think that you and I had discussed. Um, bear population in Nevada, our finite rate of increase is about 16 percent per year over the long term. That's not to say it's 16 percent every year, but over the long term, all the data that we modeled since for the last, again, 12 years, um, averages about 16 percent per year. With that, our bear population Regardless of what's decided today, our bear population will likely continue to grow with or without a hunt. The other thing that we discussed is that, and I had mentioned this previous, is that our, our bear population in Nevada is really an artifact of a much, the much larger Sierra Nevada population. We know that, that bears are going back and forth. That they don't recognize a state line, a political boundary. Our bears are going back and forth, north and south, east and west. We've documented that. Um, I think that pretty much covers that. I do. Have All right, we have Ms. McBeth. Uh, yeah, Carl, just uh, following up on <coughs> that, uh, on the California side of the line, um, I understand there is a bear hunt there. Do you have any uh, specifics on the, uh, the, po the population uh, that is on the California side of the line and how many tags they issue? In other words, that, you know, the, the specifics well, of that hunt? Yes, the, the, their, their tags are unlimited in California, but they limit the, the harvest, I think this year, at 1,700 bears in California. Um, they do hunt bears on the California side of the Tahoe Basin. Um, we hunt big game on, on the Nevada side of the population, just not bears. Okay. 
Carl? Two part question, <coughs> Carl. Uh, on the <coughs> and looking in the basin, the Lake Tahoe Basin area, when you perform the aversion um, tactics on on these bears, do you uh, do you collar them? And secondly, you also have removed bears and put them elsewhere at times. I, I understand. Is that Kate? Do you collar them? And my reason for asking that question is to see what the rate of return is, because my understanding is that they come back. Yes, and again, this was part of the research that, that Dr. Beckman did in <coughs> conjunction with us. Uh, first part of your question, we've collared a lot of bears, about 90 bears over the years. We do not collar every bear because it's extremely expensive to collar them. Part of the research that, uh, that was in his dissertation was the relocation of, of bears in Nevada whether or not that was effective in the base of the um, basin and range topography and during that study 100 percent of the bears we relocated came right back the longest took about 18 days and that was a bear that was taken from south lake tahoe over to walker lake to the washa cranja quick all right other questions for staff mr hall thank you mr chairman uh carl <clears throat> when you gave your presentation the last time, um, a couple of comments you made I thought was important. Uh, you stated that uh, there was 150 to 300 bears estimate, and, and you stated immediately afterwards that that was a very conservative estimate, as I recall. So I, I don't think it would surprise you if you found out there was a thousand bears in the state. It wouldn't surprise me if there were there were 400 or four or 500. No, it would not surprise me. But uh, just to follow up with uh, Commissioner West's statement, California actually issued 24,805 tags last year, and they took uh, their uh, quota was 1,700. They actually took 1,900. I guess that's probably the two or three days it took to get everybody notified. And, uh, 7% success rate. That, that, and like I say, this where we're going to be uh, hunting is bordering California, where they take a lot of bears in those, in those areas. So a lot of them bears, like you say, they're coming back and forth. So the, I think 300 is probably a, a very conservative estimate. Okay, we had a couple more questions. Uh, the other question, Carl, is do we know what the restricted areas are in the, I'm talking Tahoe Basin now, about where by ordinance, local ordinance uh, and the like, that uh, discharge of firearms or uh, trapping of, of animals or anything like that uh, would be prohibited? Do we, do we have an <coughs> idea of where those areas are and how well, extensive they are? All the counties have current ordinances, yes, in place restricting the shooting of firearms in congested areas. Uh, every county is just a little bit different, but yes, those ordinances are already in place. Okay. Anything else? Mr. McBeth? Um, <clears throat> we've gotten some comments with regard to uh, um, the spring, proposed spring hunt. Um, and uh, could you uh, comment uh, with respect to uh, that issue uh, in general, uh, I know that in your proposal to uh, the commission, you did not have a spring hunt. You did not recommend a spring hunt, uh, but th that being defined as June 1, uh, and there's uh, a comment that we uh, uh, received that uh, has a June 15th date as a proposed date uh, uh, to get beyond the, the cub issue. Um, and uh, I was just wondering, uh, uh, the uh, specific comment, uh, the specific document I'm talking about is the Humane Society of the United States document, and um, uh, there were some some uh, indications in there with respect to um, the spring hunt and uh, the issue of being able being able to identify, uh, you know, lactating, you know, uh, females and uh, uh, and the like. And uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, facts that was stated. Uh, was uh, that when Colorado uh, had their final spring hunt, they've now outlawed the spring hunt, but when they had their final spring hunt, 
that um, that they uh, they had a number of uh, they even with the regulation that outlawed the hunting of uh, sows with cubs uh, that they still had uh, I think the number was 21 uh, sows with cubs killed in the uh, in the spring hunt um, uh, and obviously these sows were must have been killed without cubs uh, uh, but uh, you know the issue of whether in fact they did have cubs uh, you know. Uh, if you could just comment uh, on any anything having to do with that, any differences between those jurisdictions and Nevada that you see, uh, you know, June 1 versus June 15 and, and the, so forth. Well, for starters, I think a June, a June hunt, June start date for a spring hunt would be pretty late. Um, based on all our data and all, all our research, sows with cubs of the year uh, start emerging about early to mid-April. And that, that's strictly the biology. So, you know, if you're talking about a spring hunt in March, you would avoid that, yes. Anything beyond about late April or mid-April, you're, you'd be taking the chance on, on running some cubs. And if we had a, uh, a spring hunt but had just an unusually uh, warm, you know, spring, uh, would, the, uh, would, the, would the sows be coming out early? You know, we... we have been following these guys for several years and no uh, mo all my dad all my experience is usually about mid-april when they start emerging some don't some don't come out until early part of may now okay. bears in general a lot of the the, the males <clears throat> the the juveniles and the and the sows without cubs can come out as early as march all right mr pro so if <clears throat> so you're saying if if uh if you were to have a uh, spring hunt, it should be prior to their emerging uh, from the den because then you'd be dealing with male bears, apparently. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. <coughs> Anybody else have anything? Okay, Mr. Vogler. Like when they, uh, when, when a bear would be harvested, say, out of a particular canyon or an area, that close to the population of bears just across the street in California conceivably that if they're a bit territorial I think they are another bear from California would kind of move right in to that area wouldn't he or would because obviously no boar would be there to defend himself well yeah and it's it's semantics only but bears are not territorial they have home ranges they're not territorial like like lions are bears won't defend a territory They'll defend a resource, okay. uh, but yes, all our data shows that that when either we remove a bear, and, and again, this is in these urban areas, when we remove a bear for management purposes, where a bear is killed by a car or shot by somebody else, as in as little as two weeks, we've had new bears move in, <coughs> bears that we've never seen before, and again, every year this data is is what we see every single year. This year I've caught or handled I think 35 new bears that we've never seen before. And a lot of these are older age class bears so I, I think that attests to the, to the immigration. Thank you. Um, question on complaints. How many complaints do uh, you have a rough number for this year? Uh, 418 so far this year. 418. As of the end of November. And the maximum we had one year that was a spike uh, in number. How many was that? The year that was 2007, a little over 1,500. Over 1,500 complaints. Fair enough. All right, Mr. Shrum. Excuse me, Carl. Let, let's go back to what Hank was. Well, let's go back to what Hank was talking about. Um, suppose now we were talking about that we have a quota per unit. So if, if you kill the, the bears that save one area, we have you can take five bears. And we take five bears, and suppose we we close that area. But from what Hank says and what you say, that another bear will move in. So actually, we haven't depleted the five bears if a new bear or or four other bears move into that area. Correct? In the general sense, yes. So we are actually wasting our time to go ahead and say we're going to close this area though because we're supposed to call in and say hey we've killed this bear and so therefore this particular unit is closed to hunting so if we go ahead and sell the tags we really shouldn't close that area because chances are another bear will move in there is that correct well you see you see where i'm going i, with I, I can Am tell I you that, 
Yeah, I can tell you that, I mean, some of this is, is, is going to get into what it goes beyond, I think, the, the, regulate, the regulatory changes we're talking about. But I can tell you that, that if it's good bear habitat, bears are going to occupy it. Mm -hmm. And whether a new bear moves in within a week or two or mm -hmm. several months down the road, they're going to occupy it. Yep. Well, if we sell X number of tags and we say we have 30 days from the 1st of March to the 30th of March before the, the sows come out with cubs, okay? And so we're getting close to the end of the season and suddenly the unit I'm going into, I get, I call and, and check on it and they say, no, it's closed. But because we're under the old theory that we've depleted the amount of, number of bears that we can take out of there. But what you say and what Hank says that actually we could go ahead in theory and keep on hunting because in a week or two's time, another bear or so has moved in there. Am well, I, am I th is my thinking wrong on this? No, I think you're on the right path. But in our original recommendation, when you guys asked us for a, mm -hmm. a, an example of a season structure, mm -hmm. we did not separate it out by area or by unit. Mm -hmm. It was everywhere where we have bears in Nevada. Okay. So we weren't talking about closing a specific area. We were talking about closing the hunt in general. The whole hunt, okay. The whole hunt once yep. a, a certain number was reached. Very good. Any other questions before we move on? All right. At this time, I'd like to have the public comment section on this item. I'd like to state here that, let's see, we've received quite a few communications on this, uh, basically spammed by certain or some um, steals. No uh, person. Excuse me. Yes. In excess of 2,000 communications on this issue. Um, of, the, of those communications, um, we had a lot of them that were pro and a lot of them that were con. So... I'm sure everybody got those emails and hopefully had a chance to at least look through a few of them. All right, so public comment. We'll try to go through the list that the vice chairman has. And and one, and one thing, once again, you know, please try to show respect for everybody, whether you agree or disagree, moaning, groaning, applauding. Show respect to everybody, and we'll show respect to you, too. Thank you. Please. We got a Madonna Dunbar, followed by Kathy Davison. Good afternoon. My name is Madonna Dunbar. I'm the resource conservationist for Incline Village General Improvement District. Um, I want to be very clear. I am not speaking on behalf of the district. I'm speaking as a private resident of Incline Village, Nevada right now. Um, the district has not taken a formal position on the bear hunt. Um, as a resident, I'd like to state that I believe the commission, uh, with the potential introduction of this hunt, is um, really bringing some public safety concerns to the three million people who visit the Lake Tahoe Basin for recreation every year. Um, right now, we have more than 800,000 people alone that go to the Lake Tahoe State Park, Nevada State Parks. They're there to hike, they're there to bike, they're there to see wildlife. There are millions of dollars that come in in recreation dollars to the Tahoe Basin for recreational purposes, and that is includes wildlife viewing. Um, the reason why I say there are public safety concerns, even though there is already hunting allowed in um, certain areas of Nevada in the Tahoe Basin, is it's very difficult to kill a bear. You have to be an expert hunter to kill a bear. Their vital, t their vital organ kill area is limited to the shoulder areas primarily. Um, you may be introducing the potential for injured bears versus an injured deer or some other type of big game. If you have injured bears running around in the Tahoe Basin, when there are people hiking and biking, that needs to be taken into consideration in this process of considering a hunt. Um, bears are very difficult to shoot. We've had several shot by law enforcement in Incline Village that have been wounded and have traveled through the community, um, being very difficult to track. Um, I was doing my research and because of the bear's thick skin, because they have significant fat layers, and because of their large bone structure, um, they don't develop a blood trail as easily as some other game animals will. And so you can have a bear running around that the hunter can't track and is running around where all these other people are basically out to recreate. Um, the proposed hunt right now is during the high summer recreation season. We're talking archery <coughs> June through um, September and 
all weapons later in the fall. Those are very, very, very high significant use times in the Lake Tahoe Basin. Um, bears have not been attacking people at Lake Tahoe. There's been significant property damage and that is due to urban problem bears. The hunt is not going to address urban problem bears. Um, hunting accidents, you can go on any number of national websites and you will see lists of hundreds of hunting accidents to hunters and to bystanders from hunting itself. Um, so that I believe needs to be taken into consideration for the other recreationists that use our national lands. Um, there definitely is a need for funding the bear management program. Is that time's up? Time's up? Okay. I did have the suggestion of seeing if we could get some, tra some money from the trash franchise fees to help fund the bear management program or establishing a Nevada black bear license plate program to help fund Carl's aversion programs and bear management programs. Thank you for your time. Excellent. Thank you for coming. Okay. Who do we have next? Kathy uh, <laughs> Davidson, Davidson followed by Ann Bryant. Okay. Good. Good afternoon. Thank you for hearing us. Uh, my concerns and my comments are going to be very brief and very simple and to the point. My concern, my, my greatest concern is for the sows and the cubs. We have cubs that will be in one tree. You've got a sow that's the mother that's in another tree. If that sow is taken, because most hunters probably wouldn't be able to distinguish if that bear is a mother that has cubs or not, those two cubs are going to be orphans if that sow is taken. And then you've got two problem little bears right there. Our, our concern is for the safety of these bears. And we, did, we understand where everything is coming from, we do. But we have to take a look at the reality. I just implore you to think of the ramifications of what, we're, what you're thinking of doing at this point. And I thank you very much for your time. Thank you for coming, appreciate it. And please. Ann Bryant, followed by uh, Tom Casanelli. No? Hi. Uh, thank you, Chairman and uh, Commissioners. Uh, thanks for giving us the opportunity to talk to you about this. Um, I am speaking today for our 1,500 Bear League members, over 300 of whom live in Nevada. Uh, so uh, even though I'm in California, I also have a little bit of voice here. Um, one of our members called a couple of days ago and asked what she could do because she had to work today and I said, well, it would be best if you could be here. She then went out and got uh, 142 signatures within two days on people who live in Incline and are opposed to the hunt. So I will give that to you. To you now. Thank you. Um, for as long as I've been the spokesperson for this organization, the Bear League, uh, I have been able to proudly inform people that Nevada does not hunt their bears. People are very pleased to hear that. They think it's horrific that California does. Uh, they're, they're, uh, people are changing. Their attitudes are changing. I remember also 12 years ago when we started Carl, I've worked closely with Carl through all the years that, that we've been in, in business. Uh, he told me then that there were about 500 bears in the, on the Nevada side. We guesstimate that there's about 700 on the Tahoe side of, uh, or on the California side of Tahoe. Now, Carl is guessing that there's maybe two to 300. He did, did say that that might be a low guesstimate, but I, I, I agree with him. I think it's going down. I think a lot of the bears are coming in from the back country into the urban areas and uh, we're killing them with our cars or with uh, depredation orders. Um, if the population in Nevada truly is lessening, then it's shocking to imagine that you're considering opening up a hunt now. Um, on another note, it's, in, it's really important that you honor the fact that you represent all of the residents of your state, not just the few who hunt. If you take a thousand people and you line them up and you say, everybody who's a hunter, raise your hand, you will get one person out of a thousand who raises his hand. Then you take a whole bunch of them and you line them up and you say, okay, now out of all you hunters, how many of you hunt bear? You would need another 50 to get one who will hunt a bear. 
They're usually duck hunters or deer hunters or other game hunters. So it's a minuscule number of people who hunt bears. We no longer live in the Stone Age. Uh, most human beings have evolved to a higher state of consciousness, which includes compassion for all living beings. We don't need to kill to eat anymore. Killing bears in the backcountry is not going to help solve the bear problem. Uh, hunters aren't allowed to hunt in residential areas. And as for the theory that hunting, I'm almost done, that hunting bears will establish a fear of humans, a dead bear can't be afraid of people, and he can't tell his friends to be afraid of people. Keep in mind that in California, there's been a bear hunt for over 100 years, right. and we have by far more problems than you do here. I wouldn't tamper with that if I were you. Hunting brings bears into the neighborhoods. All right. One more quick thing. Know this. It's contrary to up. what Sorry. contrary to what you guys all believe. These the animals were not born it, for you to kill. Got to move on. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your time, though. Appreciate you coming in. We have. Uh, hey. Hey. Show respect to everybody. Whether you agree or not, it's a civil discussion. We have David Lang, followed by Mark David. Yeah, so I'm going to make this quick, too. She Howdy. said most of what I wanted to say. Um, I actually handle the phones for the Bear Leagues. I'm the guy who takes all the complaints every day. And uh, over the last two or three weeks, uh, taken hundreds of calls from both sides of the borders. Uh, from people who are worried about this. Uh, you can guess by the organization that I don't get a lot of pro for it. Uh, but I've taken literally hundreds of calls of people who couldn't be here today uh, who wanted us to speak for them and to let you guys know that they don't like it. Same thing, they're worried about, you know, when, when you're hounding a bear, um, she's gonna send her cubs up a tree, she's gonna keep going. You're not gonna see those cubs. You're gonna have dozens and dozens of orphan cubs running around in your woods and it's just, it's not right, you know. I personally don't have a big problem with hunting. I have a lot of family who does it. But this is trophy hunting for a species that supposedly you have two to three hundred of. You're killing 25 plus a year, you know, depredation orders, whatnot. You're adding another 20 to it. You have 250 bears and you kill 50 a year between depredations and hunting. That's a big, pretty, that's a pretty big percentage of your population. And... I think you should seriously reconsider it. I don't think it's going to bring in enough money to be worth it, and I just don't believe it's a good idea. And a lot of the people I talk to every day and all the people who called in wanted me to let you know that. Excellent. Thank you for Thank coming. You. Appreciate it. Who do we have? Who do we have next? Uh, Mark David followed by Megan Sewell. Mark David and Megan Sewell. Not here. Is Megan here? If not, uh, here comes Megan, know. and who's next? Followed by Beverly McGrath. My name is Megan Sewell, and I'm speaking on behalf of the Humane Society of the United States and our more than 11 million constituents, including more than 92,000 in Nevada. The HSUS opposes the initiation of the first ever trophy hunt of black bears in state history, and including within that proposal the hunting of bears in the spring when dependent cubs may be orphaned and the pursuit of bears with packs of dogs. Please. The agency has not demonstrated a science-based need to initiate a trophy hunt. Studies that purportedly show an increase in bear population have not been made available to the public. Transparency in the process leading up to the initiation of a bear season is imperative. Furthermore, in 2008, a study was presented to the commission by the department, which revealed that a majority of residents did not support the recreational hunting of bears. If reducing conflicts with bears is the purported aim of this hunt, most conflicts with bears in Nevada are related to the availability of human food, primarily garbage. The department has been clear about its position that hunting will not reduce conflicts with bears, stating a legal harvest season would not seem to be a solution to the nuisance bear problem, explaining that when a bear is killed, within days or weeks, usually a large adult male will appear and occupy the same neighborhood. Data from across the country reveal that shooting bears at random fails to target the specific so-called problem bears. If the commission approves a bear trophy hunt today, two aspects of the plan should be voted down specifically within that plan. A spring hunt is inhumane and unnecessary. Among the states that allow bear hunting, only a few states allow spring hunting. 
largely because the public, as well as many hunters, oppose it. There is no way to prevent the killing of mothers and cubs during spring hunts, no matter how you time the hunt, and those that are orphaned die of starvation. Tom Beck, a retired biologist for the Colorado Division of Wildlife, stated that spring bear seasons, no matter how carefully designed, do result in the orphaning of some dependent cubs. Starvation or predation is their fate. Lastly, the use of packs of dogs to pursue and harass wildlife is a highly controversial issue and raises trespassing and dog welfare concerns. A number of states have either recently restricted the practice or are currently considering restrictions. As participation in hunting continues to decline and the gap between hunters and non-hunters widens, it becomes increasingly important that hunters carefully consider their actions in context of the general public's changing perception of their activities. The general public will not tolerate hunting viewed as unfair, unsporting, or inhumane. The HSUS and our 92,000 supporters in Nevada urge you to reject the plan to initiate a black bear trophy hunt. And I just wanted to say that if you do have any questions for the Humane Society of the United States, that um, we will not be here tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Beverly McGrath was the wrong one, so Fran Apparoni is followed by Kay Fagan. Hi, Beverly McGrath, Nevada State Director, Humane Society of the United States. Our organization agreed, and I think you propose that only one of us speak from HSUS. But if I could just say one sentence. In 2009, your incidents and complaints decreased for the second consecutive year. And of that, 95% were directly related to the bears having access to human food. And of that, 95%, 65% were in Washoe County. I've spoken with Mr. Rainey. I'm happy to propose a county ordinance in Washoe County that would require bear-proof garbage containers. Thank you. Excuse me, please. Please keep it down. Fran Apparoni, followed by Kay Fagan. Hi, uh, my name is Kay Fagan, and I presently live here. I'm renting a house down in Reno. Um, I just moved down here in February and I'm renting my house out, but I've lived at the lake at South Shore um, in Zephyr Cove for 36 years. So I'm, I have um, seen and loved the bears for all those years and, um, and I am not aware of one incident where a bear has, a black bear has hurt a human in my area. I might be wrong because I might not be aware of it, but um, and as far as what I see is, I, I feel it's our responsibility before we, ha before we start hunting the bears to, um, and, and there are those urban problem bears that, you know, are constantly there and maybe something has to be done about them. But um, I feel that the trash container problem is, is the reason that we have so many bears coming into our neighborhoods um, because they're going to get their food the easiest possible way. And, coming into the neighborhoods, the residential areas, is the easiest way. Um, we do not have, there's no <coughs> ordinance that says we have to have um, it's South Tahoe Refuse, is, um, and I'm not criticizing them, but I feel that there has to be some um, ordinances that say that everyone, everyone has to have a trash, a um, bear-proof trash container. They are very expensive, though, and, and you can buy um, a, a bear-proof trash container that they can bat around and I, I guess they can't get into them but those are like a hundred dollars but they can roll them off <laughs> and uh, and the next the next price that I found because I looked for one was a thousand dollars and that's uh, that's not price effective for people for everyone to be able to afford but we need trash uh, we need bear proof trash containers we need some ordinances because to keep the bears from getting into people's garbage and then the tourist the tourist, um, tourists who come and stay, and and you can see after they've been there, and I don't mean all tourists, but a lot of them, um, you can see that they, the morning of garbage pickup, their their trash is out or it's out the night before, and it's just overflowing, and the the, the bears just come and get into it, and I think we really need to address that problem before we ever start saying that you know we should. Um, shoot the bears and also um, I feel that hunting the bears isn't going to take care of that problem in the residential areas so okay. thank you thank you very much for coming appreciate it uh, 
All right. Doug, Doug Busselman, followed by uh, Branchin Miles, Brandon Miles. For the record, Doug Busselman, I'm the Executive Vice President of Nevada Farm Bureau, and I'm here to speak today in support of uh, the proposal for hunting. Uh, Nevada Farm Bureau um, um, encourages the, the Division and, or the Department of, of Wildlife and the Wildlife Commission to have an effective management program and from our perspective that very well could include um, a hunting season uh, properly managed and, and scientifically uh, carried out and um, we are in support of that. Thank you very much for coming. Appreciate it. Brandon Miles. Let's see Brandon Miles. All right. Margaret uh, Martini followed by uh, Dem Benchek Aaron there. Margaret Martini in Klein Village. Um, I had said earlier um, basically what I thought about bear hunting um, in the wild because the wild bears are no threat to humans. They're no threat to garbage. They're no threat to anything. And in the wild, they're fine exactly where they are. We have the problem bears in the human areas. And again, the garbage is the reason. I mean, that's. The only reason that the bears are coming down is because we have a food source <coughs> in urban areas. And um, having, this is a county commission, having um, the county regulate the trash issues is going to be the answer. It's not going to be going out in the wild and killing the bears, which obviously, uh, according to the statistics I've heard today, are diminishing and not increasing. Um, the um, Killing the male bears, again, how are you going to determine which bear is a male bear? You say, okay, I'm going to give a permit out, and it's going to be for a male bear. Well, does, it, I challenge any hunter here to show me the difference between a male and a female bear when they're on all fours looking at you. There's no, there's no way to determine that. And so the, the safety of the sows and the cubs, and we have a ton of them in our office parking lot. I bet there isn't a week that goes by that we don't have at least one bear sighting. We have a mama bear that comes with two babies. We just have bears all the time. And it's not a big deal. They are not aggressive. And we have a bear-proof trash container before our trash was a problem. We got the little, the little one on rollers. And every once in a while, I pull up to the office and I have to roll it back up to where its spot is it is not opened and it is not a problem and you know before it was a problem the bears were coming and making a problem but if you um, have the human behavior change then I feel that you won't have all of these complaints which are really diminishing because we have more and more bear proof trash containers for people that are responsible citizens and so I think that's the issue it's not hunting the bears I don't think that's a necessary thing I think it's it's inhuman especially for um, the early hunt where the you know I mean those little bears are so darn cute <laughs> and they don't have any mommies so um, I just think that you know the relocation funding through Carl Lackey I think you know you need to look at the budget give Carl and the other people that are, are trying to deal with this <coughs> more money for um, dealing with the predatory um, bears that are coming in. And, and like the lady said, there hasn't been one incident of a bear attacking, okay, attacking anyone. So they're, they're not a problem that way. They're just a problem in making messes with the trash. Thank you. Appreciate you coming out today. Is it uh, Derek, Aaron? If not, Gary, Garrett. And then Vicki Lee Danek next. Uh, good afternoon. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good afternoon, Board of Wildlife Commissioners. My name is Derek Aaron, and I am a resident of Incline Village. Um, first of all, I, and I'd like to state for the record that I'm opposed to the, uh, the bear hunting for uh, the black bear hunt uh, for Lake Tahoe. Um, I guess I'd like to a couple of questions and or concerns um, answered. Um, not I don't know if it's going to be done here at some point, but I guess I'd like to know the motivation. And I guess it's been stated somewhat, a lot of people have stated what the motivation is for this, uh, for this proposed hunt. Uh, one is it for licensing fees. Is the, uh, 
is the board is the uh, the wildlife board are they uh, you know in physical trouble and looking for this for a, for a sort of a, a way out to uh, to help their their organization is this population control again a number of people have stated that it po possibly could be but no one has definitely pinpointed the exact population I don't think anyone does know it um, the next one would be to protect the people again I think everyone in here is concerned about you know but we all know that the black bears are not aggressive we know brown bears are, are, are aggressive. We know the black bears are not aggressive. And that's what's, that's what's in this area. So I don't think that's a big concern. And then finally is the motivation for sport. Again, is this just something that's gonna, we're doing it just to let people go out and as, as people have stated before, get their, uh, get their trophy, uh, trophy uh, for. Um, I'm an avid at outdoorsman and I'm a, very active, I'm a very active outside. I love to snowshoe, I love to hike, and I love to bike. And I'm especially, at, and being in, in Klein Village, I love to go up to the meadows, and I love to go over to the to the Tahoe Rim Trail, and that is a very act. It's an active trail. It's a it's a it's a managed trail, <coughs> and people, not only residents of Lake Tahoe, Reno, and, and everywhere else, but also people from all over the world when they come into Lake Tahoe to visit for tourists are, are going to be going to that area. And everyone likes to stay on the trail, but there's going to be those folks who are going to go off the trail, and that's what really really <coughs> concerns me is those folks who are going to meander off the trail, and and as far as their safety. Uh, is concerned. Um, it's mentioned that the that the the hunting is going to be restricted to non-congested areas. So, it, it, I mean, it's you know they're not going to be allowed to go in congested areas. So if that's the case, I mean, again, people are going to be going off and meandering off, and people are going to be hiking. They're going to be camping. They're going to be biking, and that's a very very <coughs> big concern. Um, as 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 a, uh, someone uh, previously suggested, the Lake Tahoe is an area that relies on recreation and tourism. That's, that's an economy that, that this area thrives on, and most people do. What kind of message are we sending out? Lake Tahoe is a worldwide famous destination for people. What kind of message are we sending out to the people across the world if we tell them that when they come to Lake Tahoe to, to, to ski, to, um, to whatever, to hike, to relax, that there's gonna be bear hunting in, in, the, in the area and their, their safety could be at risk. Um, so again, I know everything is about compromise, and I, know, I understand that, that you know, there could be issues on, on both sides of the fence, and I know that it's compromise, and hopefully we'll all come to some kind of, um, you know, some kind of compromise for this matter. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for coming out. Appreciate it. Who else we got? Vicky, please, please. Hold down. Uh, Dan Eck, followed by Kathleen Bricker. No, Vicky. Did we have? Not here. Kathleen Bricker. Kathleen Not Bricker? Here. I'm here. Okay. Pay attention. I'm resubmitting a petition for 500 because I didn't hear you acknowledge that those are people who oppose the hunt that I mailed in, but I didn't have the hard copy. Okay. Yeah. Thank um, you. Catherine Bricker. Um, I'm requesting that you consider postponing your decision for a year and reconsider what I think are going to be a lot of the unintended consequences that this um, commission has not considered, and particularly in the uh, court of public opinion as this plays out. Um, the fact that Chairman Rainey, I gave you that cartoon today, which I love. Oh, I much appreciate it. Yeah, that's... but that's an example. I read, because of my job, every Northern Nevada newspaper. The public outcry, the attitude of the people in Northern Nevada towards this hunt is massively negative. And I, I don't think you have any idea. Um, I, I'm surprised you hadn't even seen that cartoon, which... I missed that one. Sorry. Okay, well, at any rate, it was in every paper on Friday. Um, <laughs> I feel that the proposed hunt is both out of touch and out of step with Northern Nevada's um, vision for the future. This year, our Chamber of Commerce's, the Tahoe Regional Planning Agency, the visitors and convention authorities at both North and South Tahoe have united the entire public and private sector in what our vision for our economic future is and prosperity. Lake Tahoe and Nevada are being promoted as an international stage and destination for ecotourism, sustainability, and green innovation. Bear advocates are playing a very large part of this initiative, and the next international exposition we're having for this occurs next summer at the lake. Um, please consider how it might look this, make this organization, this commission, look like a rogue group who really is going to counter what to what the private and public sector is trying to accomplish. We would like us to all join together and have more dialogue and time so that we could really try something new 
and put that on a world stage as a bear management strategy. Secondly, on a national scale, I would like you to please understand that Tahoe bears and what happens to them are not just a statistic as we're considering them today, but they literally are the stuff of legend. Our Nevada bears have become cultural icons. I could give you a stack this tall of examples, but I'll submit to you one, August this year, the Wall Street Journal. Um, it was quite a lengthy article, and it read like a Wild West story. <laughs> it was about the adventures of Bubba the Bear as he outsmarted, outstepped the man with the badge, Carl Lackey. In one reported escapade, Bubba breaks into an inclined village church, and he consumed a simply massive amount of peanut butter. The pastor reports that Bubba should be treated kindly, that it's the Christian thing to do. Well, in the hearts and minds of the nation, Bubba, our Nevada bear, is the wildlife equivalent to fast food nation. He could have been a reality TV star, Biggest Losers, Dr. Drew's Rehab, or Christy Allen's Living Large. Bubba had real talent, but Bubba was destroyed. Is the nation right. now going to watch basically time up. Okay, as we inflict further injustice on our bears to try to fund a human problem, do we want to be known for thinking that two wrongs make a right? Thank, Thank you. you. Um, just a second, just a quick, uh, brief question and then uh, yes. we'll move on with the next How do person. the residents of the basin on the California side deal with the fact that they have hunting on the California side? You know, side? I'm not in touch with any Californians, so I, I can't speak to that. I, I have no idea. All of my um, I live in Nevada on the East Shore in Douglas County, and everybody, and I work in Carson, I work in Minden Gardnerville, I work in Reno, and I work in Incline. I really don't that know. They hunt on the California I'm aware of that. I've read everything that's been in a Northern Nevada paper on this subject, and, and I simply don't know because I, I have no California contacts. Thank yeah. you very much for coming, and I'll uh, well, take a look at what you brought us there. Yeah, they all have comments as well. Carol Excellent. Quinn, followed by Linda. <coughs> Did you hear that? Repeat that. Carol, Carol Quinn. That. Repeat it. Carol Quinn. Linda Weist. Followed by. Followed by. Hello. Followed by Dan. Can you hear me? Okay. Peeler. Yes. I'm not sure which mic you're talking to here. Maybe I'll hold it up. I'm Linda Weist. Uh, I am a professor of mathematics education at UNR. And um, I am here uh, just to add my voice to those who oppose this hunt. Um, I feel very strongly about it, uh, and I hope that the Commission will consider uh, at least two criteria very carefully when you make your decision. And I hope that one is compassion, uh, compassion for living things, uh, because I think that is really, really important for all of us to consider, especially, especially people uh, uh, who are in a sense, I see human beings as charged with being the stewards of the earth, and I really think that it is our job to care about the welfare of all living things. And uh, that's a, a pretty heavy responsibility. So I hope that compassion will be one criteria. Uh, the other one I hope is facts. I hope that you will be very fact-based <coughs> in everything that you decide, and that uh, you will look at uh, some good, solid, reliable, independent uh, facts and research when you make your decision, and not simply uh, personal preference or emotional-based arguments, or isolated random incidents. I am a researcher by trade. I have done tons of research in my profession uh, from things like what, uh, uh, why stu American students are weak in geometry and measurement to why the females are underrepresented in mathematics. I, in my personal life, I research uh, everything I do from how to keep uh, black widow spiders away from my house uh, to um, uh, you know, how to, what are the be best health measures for me. I can tell you without question that the best approach for everything I find in my research always, without question, is prevention. Always prevention. And I have heard um, several people recommend that today to use preventive measures for any possible bear nuisances uh, and so forth. So I would say, uh, I would ask you to please consider uh, compassion, consider facts, and uh, uh, as I said, um, uh, to really decide what's the reason for this. You know I mean, what is the reason for this, number one? And it may stop there that you decide we don't need to go further because maybe there is no good reason. And number two, if there is a good reason, what is the most effective way to address this, this supposed problem? And so I hope those things will be considered. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate you coming out. Uh, Dan, Dan Beeler and then Walt Mandeville followed by. <coughs> My name is Dan Beeler. 
I'm a resident of Reno and have been since 1983. I'm a, I am a very strong outdoorsman and a photographer. I don't hunt no more, but that doesn't bother me. I just don't believe we need to call a couple of bears to claim that it's going to keep them out of the urban areas. I'm sorry, but if you're going to open up a trophy hunt, make it knife only. Make it, make it knife only. Are knives a legal weapon? We need to work on that. Okay. Walt Mandeville followed by Scott. Uh, Buys. Get that. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody in the commission. I'm Walt Mandeville. I represent the Lyon County Board. And I needed to make a couple comments. We had uh, two meetings, one in September and, and the most recent one, and we discussed this at length. And uh, we support the idea of a bear hunt, and we do realize that it's not going to solve the problems in a lot of the Tahoe Basin. And to go further, I spent a number of years in in the area that Carl's in right now, I have handled a large number of black bears and I've handled a large number of other wildlife. And the black bear is the one that concerned me more than any. They're very unpredictable and I'm absolutely surprised that we haven't had some real serious problems with black bears because I've seen the people out there throwing food to them at close range and trying to be friendly with them. I had a gentleman over here out of Reno, camped out, feeding the bears pancakes, got him up to his picnic bench, and he felt obligated to scratch it behind the ear. Well, 21 stitches later, he found out that didn't work very well. So I mean, that was a fairly simple deal. But uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is the Department of Wildlife is responsible for managing all of the wildlife in the state of Nevada and the black bear has essentially received no management. The only thing they've done and I've done is respond to problems. And I do know that there, uh, one of our recommendations is that when the regulation, if there is a regulation, that the county regulations be included in the brochure for, for the Department of Wildlife. Because most of our hunting regulations don't talk about local county or city uh, regulations, uh, such as uh, spotlight laws, for example, for coyote hunters. There are some counties that restrict the use of spotlights, but you have to go to the county regulations. And I would suggest that that be included in the Department of Wildlife rec regulation, the, uh, the restricted area thing I'm talking about. And there are many places in Nevada where bears can be hunted very comfortably. The Pine Nuts, the Wasak Range, Pine Grove, along the Carson Front, there's a lot of countryside. And I do believe that by maintaining the population level, that that'll help to reduce the uh, problems in the, uh, the communities. I know it won't solve it, but it could certainly help. So anyhow, that's about all I have to say, and thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Appreciate you coming out. We no scratching of bears. Scott Bies, I think, followed by uh, Rachel Snyder. No comment from KOL. Thank you. Appreciate you coming by. Good afternoon. I'm Scott Bye from South Lake Tahoe. Um, I'm just here to be another voice against the bear hunt. Um, I, again, as it's been mentioned before, I believe that there is, it's a, what is the motivation for this hunt? If it's population control, to me, in the 21st century, there's got to be something other you can do than uh, bow hunting to control the bear population, which doesn't seem to be the problem. It sounds like it's on a decrease. If it's uh, to do something about the human bear conflict. I think that is more of an education issue with the people and um, an issue with the garbage can containers that you've heard several times before. I have a bear container myself. I see people who don't and those are the ones that are strung all over the down the road um, every so often, especially in uh, Lake Tahoe where there's a large transient population of people that come and rent cabins 
they don't know that we have bears up there or they don't care uh, and they just pile trash into the garbage cans and they get strung out all over the place. It could be dogs, it could be coyotes, it could be the bears. Either way, it's an education problem for the people that we need to learn, not the bears. They don't understand that. We should be smarter than that. We should be able to handle that problem itself. Um, lastly, I'll keep this brief. Um, if it's just about allowing a trophy hunt, typically, if I'm not mistaken, most hunters like to go for the largest, uh, most mature animal. And if I'm not mistaken, again, I believe that those are the animals that actually educate the younger ones on how to stay away from people and to stay out of trouble. And they are the ones that you need to kill the least because they educate those younger ones. And I believe that's to be true. I'm not sure. I've just heard that. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming out. Appreciate you. No, no. What else do we got? Rachel Snyder, followed by Pat McDonald. Hello, for the record, my name is Rachel Snyder. I'm the administrative assistant at the Bear League. Um, I've seen a lot of bears in my time. I've seen alive ones. I've seen dead ones. I do not oppose hunting, but I do oppose hunting in Nevada. I don't think the population is strong enough to support it, number one. Um, I also see a lot of mothers with cubs, and I worry for those babies. Those babies will grow up to be more urbanized problem bears if they don't have anybody to teach them to stay wild. And you and I can't do that. No matter how much we want to, we don't have the capability, and we cannot. Um, even when they've done rehab cubs and they release them, um, they show strengths, but they're not the same. And so when you remove a bear from a population, yes, another might come in, but you're still removing a bear from the population somewhere. And I don't feel in our world we need hunting to survive anymore. You know, that's what we have grocery stores for, I'm sorry. Um, if you choose to hunt, you choose to hunt. I understand that, and I support it. But I do not support it where the population is so small. Please take that into consideration. Thank you very much. Pat McDonald, please. Followed by Carrie Kehofer. Hi. Hello, everybody. I'm uh, Pat McDonough. I uh, live in Truckee, but I do have a ranch here in Nevada, too. Uh, you know, we're talking about a couple hundred bears in Nevada, and the majority of them do live in the Tahoe Basin. I, I know they're in the Washits and other areas, but majority in Tahoe. And as mentioned by other speakers, uh, tourists come here uh, from around the world to visit our uh, beautiful basin. And these visitors hike all over the place. I run into them all over the Sierra on the trails around uh, Tahoe. And they will be unaware of any hunters in the area. Uh, allowing bear hunting will really put the tourists at risk of being shot. And I think that ecotourism really uh, brings all kinds of financial benefits to our area. It, it's a public safety issue and I really, if, if you're going to allow bear, any bear hunting, you really can't allow it in the Tahoe Basin. I, I, think, that's, I think it's wrong. Uh, however, overall I do encourage the Commission uh, uh, not to allow bear hunting at all in Nevada. And I'm a member of the Bear League, which is on the California side. I do bear aversion. Uh, Ann Bryan, our executive director of the Bear League, is here. And I, you haven't called her yet, but uh, she'll be able to answer a lot of questions you might might have on how we do it in California. Uh, thank, thank you very much. I, I have a question. Uh, do yes. they hunt bears in California? Yes, sir. In the California Tall Basin? Oh, a lot of bears there. Uh, do they hunt them in the basin in California? Yes, side? they do. And it, to be honest with you, uh, our group is trying to stop that. They hunt them right on the other side of the city line. And uh, believe me, I think, that, I think it's 100 feet. And there's hunters that actually go the 100 feet and then set up for the bears coming in on garbage day. I mean, it's totally ridiculous. And somebody's going to get shot there. And it, it, to me, it's wrong. And we're going to try and have the California fishing game uh, stop the hunting in the Tahoe Basin. You just happen to get there first, but uh, we're going to go after them. Thank you very much for coming out today. Appreciate it. Carrie uh, Kielhofer, followed by Kristen Field. Uh, thanks a lot for coming out, guys, listening to thanks. us. Uh, I'm, I'm from Truckee. I've lived in this area for 60 years. I now live on a uh, 600 acre cattle ranch over in the Truckee area and Reno 
and I've seen countless bears. I've come across them. I've had them on my porch. I've had them everywhere. I've never had one try to break in the house. Uh, they're, they're very scary. I mean, you can almost whisper at them and they take off. So I, the, the idea of killing bears because they're dangerous is ridiculous to me. Uh, and since I've been here to this meeting, I've heard probably 25 or 30 reasons not to have a bear hunt, and I haven't heard one of why to have a bear hunt, because I know one thing, they taste like hell. <laughs> I've eaten bear meat before. Uh, so anyway, that's my comment. Obviously, I'm opposed to your bear hunt. Thank you. Appreciate okay. you coming out today. Yeah. All right. Christian, we can't hear people talking Christian up here. Christian Field and then Robert Field. That's a coincidence. <laughs> um, well, I, my name is Christian Field. I live in Reno, and I'm just here to say I oppose, I oppose the bear hunt. Um, I don't see a reason for it. I lived in Tahoe for a long time. Um, I just manage my bird seed and my pet food and my garbage, and I don't have a problem with bears. I, uh, I have a problem with that. I have a problem with trophy animals for the pleasure of somebody who wants to kill them. Um, if there's a problem with bears breaking into houses, the way to deal with that isn't to kill the bear, it's to educate the people. And I think we've heard that a lot, and I'm just <coughs> echoing that. Thank you. Thank you. Please Rob, hold down. Robert Field, followed by Tim Snyder. Hi, my name is Robert Field. I live here in Reno. Um, I'm, I'm a little confused as to what the motivation for the bear hunt really is. I, uh, is it for man's need to kill on a trophy hunt? Is it to help uh, with bear, problem bears? Is it to reduce the population that's already being uh, uh, effectively uh, taken at a status quo, according to Mr. Lackey? He said the population is between two to 300 bears and that about 16% is growing uh, each year. So that would be 32 to 48 new bears every year. Well, if also there's 35 to 40 current deaths by all causes, then it seems that the bear population is being managed in a natural way already, simply by <coughs> uh, whatever means, be it a, a depredation or automobile accident or you know someone killing the bear. So I'm strongly opposed to this bear hunt, and, and it won't affect problem bears. Uh, humans are living in a bear habitat. We need to use resources to educate humans. Um, and that's something I, I, this is the Department of Wildlife, and I'm, it seems that I see a lot of heads nod here, and I question, like, what the motivation of this board is. Is it to support hunting, or is it to support wildlife? And it seems that, um, I, I really don't know what your motivations are, and I don't know the motivation for this hunt, but it, it seems if it is to support wildlife, then uh, with such a small number of bears in Nevada, and such a large population, 25,000 bears in uh, California, that any trophy hunter, if this is what it's about, you know, can get a tag and go to California and kill a bear. I mean, it's, it's like we're dealing with a very small population, even if they cross over the imaginary state borders. Um, so I think that it would be really great to see Nevada be a, a, a leader here, and um, this commission, you know, really think seriously about what this uh, hunt really means. Um, we need to spend more money on teaching humans about living in a bear habitat. The bears aren't going to go away unless we kill them all. I guess that would solve the problem, but I don't think that that's really the answer here. Oh. Um, so uh, um, my encouragement is that uh, you develop a program to educate people, especially people living within a bear habitat. And I mean really educate them. You know, every uh, taxpayer that has a home or property there, and put out a campaign. I mean, it, it, it can't be that hard to do. And if this is about collecting revenues, you know, to sustain all of your jobs and things like that, well, um, boy, it doesn't sound like a, a bear hunt is going to really increase the coffers that much. So um, property protection uh, will discourage or eliminate property damage. We really need to educate humans. We don't need to kill the bears, and it's not the answer to a bear problem. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate you coming out today. Hard to hear up here. Come on. Tim Schneider, followed by Priscilla Bauer. Hi, my name is Tim Snyder, and I strongly oppose the bear hunt. I think bears are one of the beautiful things that uh, I enjoy about living in Lake Tahoe. 
I can't believe that you guys are putting the value of a bear's life at a hundred to two hundred dollar fee. Uh, being a resident of Lake Tahoe, I'm not afraid of running into a black bear in the woods, but I am afraid of running into somebody with a gun. Um, <laughs> negating a spring hunt until after June 15th, you're still talking about a cub who's only a few months old and could not probably sustain himself. So will you then capture and rehab the cub, or are you going to now <coughs> kill it? Because it's just confused and hungry. Um, you track bear complaints, but do you track the complaints in Tahoe of the, the tourists, essentially, mostly, that come up there and don't take care of their trash, their food, and they invite the bears into their house to have these encounters. Um, a lot of the Lake Tahoe souvenirs have bears on them, and how ironic that is. Um, and last, I want to say that I keep hearing that we're not supposed to applaud and we're not supposed to I've been watching you through this whole commission, and everybody that's coming up here and saying anything positive about the bears, you're just raising your eyebrows and shaking your head. It just seems like you already have an opinion that's formed. There's a bias here, it seems like. So thank you for hearing me out. Thank you very much. Please, Pete. Priscilla, Priscilla Try and Bauer. Try to keep it civil here. And then Elaine Carrick. My name is Priscilla Bauer, and I've lived in the Valley for over 30 years. Um, I'm totally against the bear hunt. I agree with what the gentleman just said that was up before me and also the gentleman before him. It just seems like you all have your minds made up. You're not really listening to the people. There's no reason to kill a bear. There haven't been any attacks. I had a bear in one of my apartment units in the tree three years ago and the wildlife came out. It took them six times to finally shoot and tranquilize a 250 pound, two year old male bear to bring him out of my tree. I had practically all the Reno PD there and they didn't do no, they, they didn't even need to be there. They did no traffic control. I had neighbors from all of the apartments around Barham Lane and they just stood there with their guns pointed um, it was ridiculous and then when wildlife did come out finally after two and a half hours they put him in a a um, red hot truck bed and we're gonna haul him away which was fine he was tranquilized he was hogtied but they put him on a red hot truck bed that had been sitting there for three hours because it took him three hours to bring him down out of the tree Here's a 200 pound bear. There's some people in here that weigh at least 200 pounds. So it, it just seems ridiculous that everybody wants to kill the bears, but not educate the people. People can be educated. I try to educate my grandchildren on it. They're very into the wildlife. You don't feed the bears. They don't have any trouble in Yosemite. They have trash cans that prevent the, the campers from throwing their trash all around. They have no trouble. So I'm definitely against the bear hunt and I think that it should be stopped. Thank, Thank you very you. much, appreciate you coming out there. Elaine Carrick followed by Doris May Weber. Elaine Carrick. <coughs> uh, Elaine Carrick, and I know you've been Listening to, I oppose the, first of all, I do oppose the bear hunt, and I know you've been sitting, listening to many, many comments, and probably most of the things I'm going to say too. However, I need to say it, and I would like you to hear it too. I think the more times you hear it, you'll know how serious we are and how people are against the bear hunt. Um, your own website, Endow's website, for 2010 states that there are approximately 200 bears in Nevada. Not two to 300, simply 200. And that fact, that has been fairly stable for uh, the last decade. And bears have been protected in Nevada since 1929. There's two questions I really have, and I've not heard the answers to these. One, what is the justification or reason for this hunt, and what will the hunt accomplish? If the hunters are running around shooting in congested areas, um, the urban and nuisance bears that get into gar garbage, excuse me, I've got to start over again. <laughs> the hunters are not going to be in congested areas 
where the urbanized and nuisance bears are. They're going to be in, in the woods killing the bears that are not a problem. So again, what does it accomplish? It's been an accepted premise that when garbage is properly stored, the bear problem does go away. On the other hand, when a nuisance bear is killed, another one simply comes and takes its place. So the killing of the bear is not solving anything. Having people responsible for their garbage would greatly improve the bear problem. There have been comments from the board made about the meat or bear carcass that should be removed from the field to alleviate the perception that, to the public, that the animal is being taken solely for its hide. But the reality is, that is exactly what this hunt is all about. This is trying to be disguised as a safety issue, and it's not. Uh, the discussion regard it's simply, I feel, a trophy hunt for a bearskin. Uh, there's been also a lot of discussion regarding hunting the bears with dogs. Having dogs tree a bear and then having a hunter come and shoot it while it is sitting in the tree does not create a picture of sportsmanship. A couple more facts. If the number in your website of 200 bears is correct and your proposal is to give out 45 tags, uh, and I believe it's 20 for each two different seasons and five to uh, non-residents, that would be killing almost 25 percent of our bear population. You add that to the high mortality rate of young bear cubs, which is 50 percent, bears hit by cars, and 20 nuisance bears taken out by three strikes you're out, and there's just not enough room in those numbers Thank to you. have a bear hunt. Thank you. I appreciate you coming up. Appreciate your time. Okay, have a Doris May Weber followed by a Dr. Baker. Doris May Weber, I'm speaking for myself. I'm afraid whatever I had to say here would be a duplicate of all the wonderful people that have preceded me. I, too, am opposed to the bear hunt. I would like to know the scientific facts that have been used by this commission to propose such a terrible thing. I have another question. Every one of you gentlemen on the commission took an oath to protect the wildlife of Nevada. Please honor that commitment. Yay. Thank you. Thank you for coming up today. Appreciate your comments. We have a we have Dr. Baker. Dr. Baker. Followed by uh, Lloyd Peake. Lloyd Peak, come on up. Uh, not here. And then, who else? And then Thomas Bauer. My name is Lloyd Peak. I live in South Reno. Uh, let me just say at the outset, I'm opposed to the bear hunt, but I want to raise uh, an issue that I've seen or uh, heard about raised all this morning on this on this issue, and that has to do with the motivation behind uh, the. Uh, uh, advocacy of this new rule uh, and uh, <clears throat> I'd also like to indicate that everything I've seen and everything that I've heard and I've talked to another a number of people in, in my community by the way I hike a lot in the in the uh, Mount Rose wilderness and surrounding areas but in any event uh, just about everyone I've talked to has pointed out one thing and that is the question of money and I understand that Endow is under a lot of pressure like most other governmental agencies these days and probably most folks in this room. Uh, and, uh, and so I, I understand that. I also understand that, that uh, uh, people like Carl Lackey uh, are, as I understand, our state's leading uh, bear biologist, uh, uh, is consumed with this problem of dealing with, with uh, bear complaints uh, in the community takes a lot of time and therefore a lot of money uh, and and I understand that as well but uh, if the quote that I read in the recent uh, copy of the uh, Gazette is accurate I think it is uh, from uh, Carl Lackey that that having a hunt is not going to solve at all this conflict <coughs> between bears and human beings it's just not and if indeed then the key issue is back to the question of money 
I would strongly urge, if it hasn't already been done, for this commission or whoever else may be involved to come up with specific facts on two issues. Number one, how is this rule, if implemented, going to be enforced? And number two, how much is that going to cost? I have a strong sense that whatever revenue is gained by passing this rule in terms of tag fees and so forth is going to be infinitely less than what it's going to cost to really, honest to God, enforce this proposed rule. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you coming up. Thomas Most Bauer. Thomas Bauer. Followed by probably Gil Yannick. Good afternoon. My name is Thomas Bauer. I live in South Suburban Reno. <coughs> And I come to speak in opposition to the proposal. Um, I look around this room and I see a lot of people came here today to speak out. I don't see any bears. So I'm here to speak for the bears. There's two to three hundred bears that we're talking about. We don't have a bear problem. Carl Lackey and his staff are doing a fine job of handling problem bears. We have a people problem. We should implement and enforce bear-proof trash containers and, and make a law to enforce that. The answer to all wildlife programs, perceived or otherwise, is not always simply to kill. You can call it hunting, or what it really is, killing. You are Endow, the Department of Wildlife, not the Department of Killing. Please, just once, let nature take its course. I would rather encounter a live bear while walking through the woods than seeing one mounted on these walls. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you coming out today. Gary Anik, followed by, I'm sure, Don Moley. <coughs> For the record, Gil Yannick, Carson Advisory Board. Um, let me start off by saying what this hunt is not. It's not, this hunt is not a, regarding a safety issue. It's not a money maker. And it isn't a proposed solution to the urban bear conflict problem. This hunt was brought about because we have a great number of licensed hunters in the state that have asked for it. They come to the, their local advisory boards and they say, you know, our bear population is growing. Why don't we have a small controlled bear hunt? So those comments were brought forward to the Wildlife Commission and resulted in these proposed rules and regulations that we're all talking about today. First of all, Spring bear hunt is out of the picture. We're not going to have that. The hunt, September 15th to December 15th. We're talking about 45 tags with an estimated success rate of about 50%. So we're talking about 20-some-odd bears. You've heard that between a regeneration rate of 15 to 16 percent, plus an immigration quantity that keeps coming over the hill, this number that we're talking about is not going to decimate our bear population. And I hear this question about, you got people out in the woods, we've got to attract people from all over the world, to use the trails and to hike and to ski and to do things. Do you realize now that we hunt deer in the same area and we've been doing it for years and years? Hunters with guns going into the same woods that you're walking your dogs and your pets and people are hiking and, and, and you know, recreating in? We haven't killed any of them. We haven't had any conflicts. We haven't had any of our wardens being approached by any of the residents in the Tahoe area. They say, I saw a guy in the, gu in the woods with a gun and he threatened me, or he shot me, or he tried to shoot me. 
So why do you think it's going hey, to happen? Please. please, audience. So why do you think by having a bear hunt, we're going to upset the balance that we've had all these years? I understand, and what I'm really hearing is a lot of people who are just basically anti-gun, anti-hunting. Please, think about this more logically. It's something that the people of Nevada want. Thank you very much for coming, Gil. Appreciate your input. Very small. We have All right. Don Moley, followed by Paul Dixon. <coughs> Good to see you again, Don. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Commission Members, Don Moldy Reno representing myself. A follow-up on Gil's comment. I haven't done the numbers, but I suspect this leader, I have a hunch, it's going to be red ink, and you're going to be using sportsman's money from elsewhere to subsidize the program. When you figure in enforcement, administrative costs, and the rest of it, I don't think it's going to pencil out. But uh, my comments, I suppose, on the wounded bear risk to human uh, uh, issue maybe we'll wait until we're not talking weapons in this uh, set of regulations right when we're talking bows and arrows that comes down the road because i am very concerned about that issue particularly um, with the bow and arrow thing and i'll get more into that later i guess third thing is that uh, according to uh, mr lackey who's been beat up pretty well here today uh, i'll continue the procession here uh, his report says that the largest male bears exist in the Tahoe Basin urban interface area, if I read the report correctly. We all know that hunters like to kill the biggest male bears. That's their passion. That's why they do this. And it seems kind of uh, silly to think that there won't be hunters in the urban interface Tahoe area where the biggest male bears live. That's where they're going to go, at least some of them. And I'm very interested to see what the commission does about restricting that if in fact, it, if you decide to go ahead with this, and if in fact uh, you take that seriously. The second, the, the last thing is my pet passion, which is dogs. And I uh, am opposed to having dogs free running uh, through the woods in the Tahoe Basin, chasing bears. If, the, if hunters are gonna use dogs, put them on a leash, they can follow a bear trail on a leash just as well as running free. I think it's crazy to have packs of dogs chasing bears around the Tahoe Basin, and I would hope that you would not allow that. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Much yeah, well, appreciate it. Paul Dixon, followed by uh, Bob Brunner. Uh, for the record, Paul Dixon, Clark County Advisory Board to Manage Wildlife. Um, before this meeting, I was actually shared, as with all the commissioners, with the 43-page document from the American Humane Society. And I took time to read this, and I don't know how many of you did. It's 43 pages long. And when we came into our meeting, and we talked about this. We had the lady from the uh, Southern Nevada chapter, the Humane Society there. And I think we came out of this, and you've heard here today, and I find it very interesting. What I saw is kind of the lightning rod points coming out of this thing here in my viewpoint that are kind of things that are going to be almost non-negotiable with the Humane Society and others is, is one of those being this verify, and we've heard numbers all over the board, but verify that we have a huntable population. So the recommendations from Clark County were once and for all put a kind of a stake in what is that number and somebody has to stand by that number. When, when asked questions today by, by Commissioner Howe or Commissioner McBath, the number keeps vacillating. Even when Commissioner Vogler asked it or Commissioner Schrum, the number's been anywhere from 200 to 400. And then, you know, I think Charlie said you could get up to maybe 1,000. I don't know. I, I, I would like us to, as a commission and boards, stand with a number and show the, Amer the, the public of Nevada and the Humane Society and other people who have testified today that we do have a population to hunt. Second thing is, as was discussed strongly here, we should do nothing in setting our hunting seasons and other things that would affect sows with cubs in a springtime hunt. I realize that's when the pelts on, on bears are pro the best as they, they do things and other stuff. I think that we should basically avoid any hunt season when we're setting seasons and other things that would avoid us having to deal with sows. And we talked about, well, if you hunt before this time, the sows aren't out of the den. I think Commissioner McBest's point is maybe sows with cubs aren't, but basically sows, juveniles, and boars are all going to be out early. And so you're going to be shooting female bears. And so I, 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 I vie to say that you're not going to have sows with cubs early. And the last thing is, 
is I strongly recommend, and our board does, that this commission, when you set season limits, because we support a bear hunt, you set them very conservatively for the first couple of years, and you evaluate each one of those years with the groups, whether or not you've met the objectives and whether or not you're having impacts on the system. And I'm not sure that 20 is a conservative enough number for each of the seasons, and, 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 I, and, and I would ask you to look at that carefully. But those are the recommendations we came in. It, it's interesting that when I read this, there's a lot of things in here I don't agree with as a hunter or other things, and I think that all the facts in here, there, there, there's always truth in every fact. Are there hunters that abuse their dogs? Absolutely. But are there a majority of hunters that don't abuse their dogs that use them for hunting? Absolutely, in my viewpoint, that I've seen in my life. And so you can always pull one thing. Thank you. Thank you. Bob, Bruner. For the record, my name is Bob Bruner, Washoe County. Um, we've already heard the biologist testify that this, this one population, through so our 35,000 bears is what the population is. Part of that population is in Nevada. Population size is 35,000. Um, I think if you want to go ahead and take a look at the problems that we've had with hunting bears in the Tahoe Basin, we look at the California side and we haven't seen any. We can look at 150 years of bear hunting on the California side of the Tahoe Basin. Where, where's, our, where's our problem? Okay. If you're going to defend wildlife, you need to pay for these folks right here. Okay. And you do that by raising tag money. Okay. There's a lot of volunteers, there's a lot of volunteer groups, there's a lot of nonprofit groups that don't raise any money and don't protect wildlife, okay? Lackey's, all of his work has been paid for by hunters. These folks are paid for by hunters. So um, with this budget shortfall coming on, in the addition to the, to the other wildlife that they're already protecting in the wildlife in the Tahoe Basin and, and in, the, in that range, additional revenue, it's, is additional revenue standalone it's not going to pay for it itself but when you add it to the other things that they're already doing it is additional revenue for this department thank you very much appreciate you coming down I don't have any other uh, cards if we miss anybody all right we have Candido and then uh, lady over here with glasses yeah there you go. Be next okay and then we'll get you Candido Mandy Elko cab we voted to support this thank you very much ma'am Oh, of her, and then you, sir. Hello. Hi. For the record, Morion Martin. I live in South Lake Tahoe. Did you fill out a card? I have. Okay. Fill okay. one out when hand Thank in, you. please. Thank you. Um, a couple comments. One, I am a California resident, and the bear that's on my flag is no longer a resident of my state, and I'd really urge you to look at the small population that you have here. I'd hate to have you at some point not have such a wonderful, magnificent animal as part of your state. The other thing I just wanted to comment on, um, the misconception about the aggressiveness and the fearfulness of so many black bears. I do happen to work with the Bear League. I am often called out from my work where I am often dressed professionally in skirts, shoes, and I go out into the woods and under homes. I shake my keys and the bears go. They don't charge me, they don't eat me, they don't swipe at me. And I think um, the fact that many of our Bear League members are female and actually work very intimately with the bears says something about the bears' ability to respond to humans and to move out of the way and to respect the human as the dominant animal in the basin. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming out. Appreciate it. I'm Mike Turnipseed from the Douglas Advisory Board, and I didn't fill out a card. I apologize for that. But when you're done? Sure. Yeah, I will. thank you. Um, we had one member absent. Um, we voted three to one uh, to have a bear hunt. Uh, we didn't particularly like the spring bear hunt. Uh, the one dissenting vote would have voted for us if we had excluded the Tahoe Basin from, from the hunting area. Um, I agree with most of the other cabs that, that, that uh, a bear hunt would be a good thing. I don't think the revenue is significant, but I mean, as a sportsman, I favor the hunt and so did our board. And we had no public uh, at our meeting opposed to the bear hunt. The only public that, that we had was in favor of it. Thank you very much. I had a couple sure. questions. Uh, we had a question, and then uh, we'll you see want to if come this back up, and then we'll. Is it Douglas County? Yeah. Yes. About a question about the meeting. Your no. Douglas County. County. Yeah. Douglas County. Yeah. Um, looking over your uh, minutes here, you said that uh, 
Uh, and Carl Lackey stated that many other animals are already hunted in the basin, and there are already laws on the books to govern hunting in these areas. Is that right? Sure. And uh, and you you had some comments in your board meeting that you'd like to see bears hunted everywhere that you can hunt deer in the basin? Yeah. Yes. We did have that discussion. It's, I live in Genoa, and I have bears in my yard a lot, but they don't stick around in town during the day. They're up in the canyons. Uh, this idea of safety and people killing bears in the neighborhood, they're down there at night. Three weekends in a row, I raked leaves, um, hauled them to the Greenway's place, but uh, and my wife was helping me, and she said, I don't mind picking up the dog poop, but I kind of object to picking up the bear poop because there was four pretty good-sized piles of bear poop in my backyard. <laughs> this year, I only had one apple on the tree, but in years past, I have, well, I think it was two years ago, I went out to get the Sunday paper, and there was a pile of bear poop about the size of a dinner plate. I mean, that close to my Sunday paper. And it was full of apples. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> Jim Jenny, I'm speaking for myself. One thing I've noticed, and I've sat here today and I've listened to this, a lot of it goes right back to the county. You guys can't do anything about it. Yellowstone, the first time I went through there, bears climbed on your cars. Bears did everything. They put in bear-proof containers. They controlled them. And you go up to Yellowstone. I went up there, I think it was four years ago, and we saw two bears. Every time you go somewhere, the game wardens or the park rangers are asking, did you see any bears? Yeah, I saw two bears, and both of them were running like hell. I didn't get a chance to look at them. And I think... If they do away, get the garbage cans, make it an enforced deal, your problem bears, your gar what I call garbage bears, are going to leave the immediate area. They're not going to have the food. They do not. These wild animals don't want to live with people. They want to live away from them. But at easy food, they're going to be there. So I think if they move away, our problem is going to be done. I think the bear hunt's going to be a valuable thing. I've lived in Nevada all my life. We have more sheep, more elk, more game in the state of Nevada now than when I started here 70 years ago. There's why? Because they're protected by the Nevada Department of Wildlife. We've got everything going for us. If I was an animal, I would want to come under the protection of the Wildlife Department and basically have a season because then you are protected. Yes, some of them are taken. We all have to come and we all have to go. I don't, you know, I, I have a real hard problem standing and listening because I've served on uh, wildlife boards and everything. People have their opinions and it becomes a deal of having to work within the boundaries, listening to everybody and the problem here, and I'm not being derogatory to the bear people here today, but a lot of you stood right up here and says, geez, we need these garbage cans. Geez, we need this. We need that. But nothing has been done. The minute we propose a hunt and get it, we get a hunt in here, these bears are going to be protected for that. These things are going to come along behind. And I realize it's a hard, probably a hard issue to stand in... Uh, the way some people feel about animals. But I think that's something that uh, you guys have to look at when you make your decision. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate you coming out. Ask um, people to address the commission. Um, one thing, um, please, when you're addressing the commission, address the commission and not people in the audience. Appreciate it. Okay. Ma'am, you'll be next. For the record, Daryl Harwell, Washoe County. At our meeting, we approved the bear hunt. We did make a recommendation to increase the non-resident tag to $300. Do believe California charges $230 for a non-resident? We're going to charge a little bit more. Um, the recommendation of a $10 management fee for the bear goes along with it. But we did support a bear hunt. Thank you. Thank you very much. Shit's coming up. Uh, ma'am, did you fill out a card, ma'am? Oh, yeah, you got it in your hand. Excellent. You can hand it in. Appreciate it. 
the gentleman, oh, my name, Helen McRae. I live in Carson Valley. The gentleman two, two times ago said, some of us come and some of us go. And before I go, I just want to tell you that I am also a member of the Bear League. In fact, I'm the oldest member of the Bear League. And I have been on a number of calls only as an onlooker. You can well see why. And I have been closer to bears than I am to you, any of you, and spoken to them and smiled at them, and they all smile back. I love them. They are gorgeous, gorgeous animals. And the cubs, I don't have to tell you, they are just beautiful, beautiful little four-legged kids. So please, don't let there be any more, no more hunting, not only of bears, but everything that's living. Please, thanks. Thanks for coming out. Appreciate you coming up. All right, we about done the public comment. Mr. Gardner, you filled out a card at some point, I think? Yes, I did. All right. Walt Gardner, um, I feel if there's a huntable population and we have the opportunity to give sportsmen the chance to, to harvest some of these animals, I think we would be fools not to take advantage of that. Thank you. I have a question for Mr. Gardner. Uh, okay. uh, question? Mr. Gardner. Are you aware of the two moose that showed up in Wells this year? I heard about them, yes. You didn't see them? No, I did not. Would you take my word that I saw them? <laughs> a bull and a cow? I have no reason not to. Okay. The uh, same arguments that you've heard here all day could be made for those two moose, too, couldn't they? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming out. Appreciate it. Have anybody else? And we'll. And seeing no further public comment, we'll close the public hearing on this matter. At this time, we'll see if the uh, commission had any questions for any more, more staff members or anything here. We'll start on commission comments. I'd just like to throw out one thing. Um, if I could ask Mr. Lackey, just, you know, just a clarification of a couple of the numbers. I mean, I, I think I got it straight, but just, just to be clear on the numbers. We've seen an approximate 16% uh, overall increase per year, and that's after all causes, right? That's all, all causes of mortality? Yes, the, the, the average of 23 bears per year killed for human-caused reasons is already incorporated into the model. So the, our, our sustainability, that sustainable part of the population, is above and beyond that. I just wanted to clarify that because there was, seemed to be some confusion about that. It's above and beyond all known factors. I have okay, question too. very good. Uh, Carl, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> do you happen to to know what the numbers are in the ranges other than the total basin with respect to black bears? I mean, is there well, our, our our population estimate is not for the Tahoe Basin. It is it is for what we consider our core population, the the greater Carson Range, Pine Nut, Virginia Range area. And and specifically in the Wasics, the Pine Groves, the East Walker, the Sweetwaters. No, we do not have specific so numbers down any there. Any hunting would there be quite a few people if they if uh, hunt was approved would be outside the basin area. I would presume. I would assume most of it would be yeah. The upper parts of the Carson Range, Little Valley, Marlette. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? Go ahead, Mr. Trump. No, uh, Mr. Chairman, there's just a little bit of clarification. There was a comment made. Speak up about the the comment made about declining uh, bear population, but actually that's not exactly true. Uh, I have a, a page out of Outdoor Life. In fact, I stuck a copy back in the back. I gave one to all the commissioners uh, pertaining to the black bears. It's supposedly this is from the International Association of Bear Research and Management. It was the Outdoor Life, and I think it was the October or November issue that supposedly there's 350,000 black bears in the United States, okay? 163,000 are thought to be east of uh, Mississippi. That leaves 187,000 west of the Mississippi, okay? Kentucky and Oklahoma now has a new bear hunt. 
Um, Texas is planning one, and I hear all these good people talk about how great they are to be around the bears. If you have a wild animal that weighs anywhere from 150 to 200, 150 to 150 more pounds, that's very predictable. I don't care how cute they are. If they decide to take your head off, then the complaint is going to come to us. Why didn't we do something? Because we knew the bears were there. And the thing to do, and our, we're responsible for handling these problems. And if we can go ahead and stop a problem before it comes one, that's our responsibility. And I think we should do it. Um, just a question for you, Miss. Uh, so, was there a question? No, that's okay. okay. That's a question. Um, the question always comes up about the population, whether or not urban bears are always urban bears or are the wild bears mixed with the urban bears. Could you kind of address that a little bit? How much movement we get between urban and what I what might re anybody might refer to as a wildland bear? Yeah, I mean, you know, that's one of the, the beauties of long term data sets and long term research. When we published the paper in 2002, the bears that we saw were either wildland or urban. They spent almost their entire time in the urban areas versus the wildland areas, or the wildland bears. Over the years, that research has continued. Uh, we have satellite collars on several bears right now, and many of these bears, it, it, it depends on the year. Mm -hmm. you know, we're not looking at just a two and a half year window, now we're looking at a 12 or 13 year old, thir thir excuse me, a 12, 13 year window. And Depending on climatic conditions, the bears that we thought were strictly wild will go down to those urban interface areas and take advantage of human foods. Uh, we've taken several bears out this year that were doing just that. There were, you know, the one male that I described earlier was going from Fallen Leaf Lake in South Lake Tahoe all the way to Washoe Valley back and forth for about a year and a half. Very good. Do you have any other questions? Um, go ahead. Carl, is it true that there are some urban bears that, that never hibernate at all? Sure, sure. Bears hibernate because of a lack of food. Yeah. And when there's a year-round source of food, there are some that, that stay active all year long. Yeah. I'd heard that, and I wanted to make sure it was true. Mm -hmm. Very good. Any further um, questions? All right. Commissioners, any uh, comments? I mean, as we know, go back to the agenda item here, that this is the, inform the informational item here today, and then we'll be taking action on it. Um, so, but go ahead and, is there any changes to this? Go ahead, Ms. Bogle, do you have a, <coughs> no, you know, if, if there's any changes that one would like to see or options for tomorrow, um, go ahead. Uh, my own personal opinion is I don't see anything wrong with taking uh, the Warshow's uh, recommendations of changing from 200 to 300 for the non-resident. I don't see a problem with that. All right, so we should uh, throw at least um, write that in as one of the possibilities for tomorrow. 200 or 300. Um, hey look, you know, I'd like to address a couple things. Um, you know, from what I've heard from the commission, there was, and there was a couple, bunch of questions from the audience about what the motivation of this issue was. Um, you know, what I have heard being in these meetings is, ba is the number one reason that I have heard for motivation is the reduction of human bear interaction, and the other one is to gather hard data on, on the bear population further. That's the main motivations that I have per personally heard, and Mr. Beth will shortly enlighten us of, of a couple others. Um, I also, uh, you know, there's been a lot of great comments today, and I appreciate them. I mean, there's some comments here that uh, definitely make I uh, think about things. One thing on ordinances is, you know, I personally will support ordinances wherever it is to be term determined to be necessary by the local community. However, those ordinances should be best dealt with on a lo the most local level possible. We're talking about trash ordinances that sort of thing. And I don't think it's necessarily our place to be telling a community whether or not they should have a trash ordinance. I mean, the impact on their, commu their community is, is best known by those local leaders. 
in whatever format it, that is. But if they determine that, I mean, be the best course, absolutely. That's something we very much support. But it varies so much from community to community that for us to throw out a blanket statement that there should be trash containers is, I mean, that's something best determined by local communities. Okay, we had Mr. Beth, and then we'll. Um, many of you asked the question, um, what is the reason for this hunt? And, um, and um, Scott just gave his answer. Um, I will tell you that I don't agree with, with, with Scott's uh, position uh, on that. Um, um, I, don't, I don't think that a justification for this hunt has anything to do with urban, uh, urban bear conflicts. Um, I think that's a completely separate issue that uh, the communities need to deal with. Um, uh, I don't think it has anything to do with population control. Um, uh, uh, I don't think it has anything to do with safety. Um, uh, so where does that leave us? Where, what it leaves us is with a core difference of wh how we think about wildlife and how you think about wildlife. And I will tell you that I am very happy that you've come here, and I'm, I can see that you're very passionate. I can see that you care about wildlife uh, and that you care about the bears. Um, but I will tell you that us as sportsmen um, have that same passion. And, and it's more, I, I, I realize it's very difficult for you to understand where we come from, but I can tell you that the people in this room that are here that are sportsmen are the most committed wildlife advocates that I have ever seen. Uh, I have been doing this on a county advisory board level for three years and now two and a half years on the commission and I cannot begin to tell you how passionate the people in this room are with respect to wildlife. I can point out to this gentleman in the uh, purple shirt back here, and I can tell you that he and I do not see the same on a lot of issues. But I will never question his commitment to wildlife. This gentleman that's sitting right here in the shorts, Mel Belding, has won the Kirch Award. I cannot, I won't even go into the details of what this man has done for the benefit of wildlife, but I can tell you that I seriously doubt that anybody has that kind of commitment in this room, including myself. So the reason we hunt goes to the core of this issue, the, 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 your question, why are we doing this hunt? We're doing this hunt simply because there's a huntable population and it fits within the wildlife management model that is the very purpose for the Department of Wildlife. Our beliefs are such that if we hunt an animal, it is absolutely protected. That we are going to commit resources to that animal and we are going to make sure that it survives. And I can tell you that it is my firm belief that if an animal is made a game animal and we hunt it and we manage it, its survival is guaranteed. I know that these concepts are difficult for you to understand, but that is the basis of our core beliefs. And to answer your question, that's, that's the answer, is that we hunt them because we can. Because there's a huntable population, there's a sustainable, if we, have, if we have a sustainable harvest that does not harm that population, we're going to be managing it, we're going to be putting uh, bio, uh, biology resources, which we have already been doing for years with bears, with uh, Mr. Lackey's uh, and, and his group, and, uh, and we are going to have uh, game wardens protecting these resources, we're going to have all of the infrastructure of the Nevada Department of Wildlife weighing in on this animal, and it's going to be no different than the deer, the elk, the mountain lions, all the other game animals that we basically manage. So the answer to your question is, why are we doing this hunt? We're doing it because we have a huntable population and we can, and we feel as strongly about the bears as, as you folks do, and I, I, you know, I know it's going to be hard to swallow, and you don't understand, and you can't, and fathom, you know, the killing of an animal at all. And I don't, and I think, you know, uh, Commissioner Vogler's point is, is absolutely correct. It doesn't matter that we're talking about bears. 
uh, this, you, you have the same feelings, I know, uh, with regard to deer, elk, or any animal that we, we hunt. And so I just want you to go away from this meeting understanding the passion and, and how we feel about wildlife. Uh, and you may not agree with it, but I don't necessarily agree with, you know, with your, your positions, but I respect them. And I guess what I'm asking is that, that you respect our, uh, you know, our beliefs and how we manage wildlife. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jeff. Appreciate it. Thank you. It's got to be the same for everybody. To respect for everybody's opinion, please. And I uh, very much agree with Mr. McBeth on many things, and I disagree with him on many things. And I'll, you know, I've got maybe slightly different motivations, but we're in the same category, going down the same path. I think, uh, you know, the commission is very much filled with conservation conservationists. We're here because we have a great passion about wildlife. We want to see this wildlife continued. We want to see the pr propagation of the wildlife. The methodology for it is sometimes, uh, I shouldn't even say sometimes, it's often debated and is different from other, some other people. But basically, we do all share, and I think it'd be fair to say, share with Mr. Macbeth as well as most of the other individuals on this commission, the passion and the commitment to preserve and protect this wildlife. The methodology might be different from some people, but... Um, okay, other commissioners, Mr. Bogler, <coughs> conservationist. Yes. First of all, if I remember what the word temporary means, this is a, a on an experimental basis. And if we find out through Mr. Lackey's work and other people that we are indeed hurting this population of huntable bears, then we can always change it, just like we change for other seasons and, and, and things like that. So it's not yet set in stone uh, hunting it's called hunting it's not called killing and anybody that's hunted very much and has blisters on their feet that have social security numbers knows it's hunting so you don't always get what you go hunting for and just like the two moose that showed up in wells what if there's a huntable population up there you can make the same arguments for them for antelope, for any other species that happens to move into the state that gets into enough of a population position that we can hunt it. It's not, it's not uh, something that's out of the realms of possibility. Uh, the comments about head mounting. Do you know what the alternatives for these animals have? There's a story behind every one of these animals. Every animal that I've taken that I have pictures of or a head mounted, there's a story It lives on forever. They're going to either be maggots or bear scat or coyote scat. That's their alternative. But that animal there, there's a story about him. That animal there leaning on the, on the deer horn, there's a story there. Maybe you don't understand that. My people have been hunting in this country for 10,000 years, and it's part of our tradition, and it's part of the way I was raised from the time I was able to walk. Uh, we hunt it, and it, it's part. It's as much a part of my tradition and history as anything else. We have a huntable population, and for God's sakes, let's do something with them. Thank you very much. Um, anybody else over here? On the All right. Uh, I think we're done with con we're done with public comment. I'm sorry. We're done with public comment. We're done with public comment, ma'am. Ma'am, ma'am. Just give her a warning that she can please, be removed. Please, please, ma'am. We don't need to have. We don't need us. We, d we don't need to have people removed from the room. Hey, that's last warning, please. We please don't make us have you removed from the room, okay? We'd like to keep this civil. We'd like to keep it as calm as we can. Please. All right. Thank Murder. You. We're going to move on to the next item. All right. All right. Are there any, any further items before we move on to the next item on the agenda? No. Nothing else. All right. Let's move on to item.